Welcome to the What is Muscle Stimulation Brief Tutorial. Now, all information in any format on this site is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not to be taken as medical advice in any manner. Always consult your medical practitioner or practitioners treating, your, treating you for any medical conditions that you have regarding any home medical equipment usage. Please view our disclaimer documents and contraindications, warnings, precautions, pages, and read the, review those from time to time because your conditions could change over time and that might affect your use of a home electrotherapy device. So we're going to start off with what is muscle stimulation? Now hopefully you've already gone through the TENS tutorial. The best way to learn about muscle stimulation, whether you're in a claimant with the device or a payer representative, a claims manager, a department manager, a nurse case manager, even if you don't have the device, is to take the EMS or muscle stimulation modes training for the TENS Twin Stem 2 and the muscle stimulation modes for the Quad Star 2. You should also take the TEN supplies training tutorials because wh whatever electrotherapy device you're using it will only be as effective as the quality of TEN supplies that you have. But we'll start off with going over to the documentation page and some of this will be covered, is also covered in the TENS tutorial if you might have taken that first. But we're going to start with Electrode placement. You're going to be more specific about electrode placement because you're trying to contract individual muscles which are going to be specifically determined by your treating physician or clinician. So what you're going to want to do with, the, with this device is you're going to click on in the documentation under patient documentation the body diagram. And that will pop up. Now when you're training on the device with the tutorials all our training modules suggest that you put electrodes on a large muscle group that is not injured in any way to do your training and practice. So let's say you don't have any, your left leg is fine, it's your right leg maybe. So you put the electrodes on your left leg and you would practice all the cycles and learn your device as you're going along with the instructor to the training modules on your left leg so you don't aggravate or hurt anything while you're just training. Maybe you can turn it up a little bit louder, the device up a little bit loud, um, stronger amplitude just to get an understanding of how it works. Don't practice a big in initially on the injured area. But you would print this document out and take it to your clinician and they would specifically tell you where they want the electrodes. Maybe they want two electrodes here and here or wherever they want. That way you can be specific about so exactly where these electrodes are going to be placed. And if, if you've done muscle, muscle stimulation, if you're the claimant, you've probably had it done at the therapy clinic and you might be familiar. But it's always good to print this out and get specific information on exactly where the pad placements are. Now let's talk a little bit about if you go over the Twin Stem 2 manual or the Quad Star 2 manual you can find sections specifically describing what is muscle stimulation and you should read your manual. We try to give documents and tools and help you to learn in many ways the tutorials through printed documents but you should specifically review the manual that comes with the device that you've received or if you're a payer representative, you should just know what your, what your claimants are getting. So the bottom line is, as you know, there's general description, there's an introduction about what a pain is, um, an explanation of EMS. Electrical muscle stimulation is an internationally accepted and proven way of treating muscular injuries. It works by sending electronic pulses to the muscle needing treatment. This causes the muscles to exercise passively. It's been around for a long time. Now, you can have any, you could have a TENS unit on and you can just turn up the amplitude so strong that it's going to contract the muscle. But that's not necessarily going to do it and cause a, a, muscular, a muscular benefit. The muscle stimulation with the pulse rates, pulse widths and such is specifically designed to help your body with muscle injuries, A, avoiding disuse atrophy and, and then eventually aggressively promoting muscle strength without putting undue strain on any surgically repaired ligaments, tendons, um, bones, or anything, um, stitches, things like that. So in most cases, once you know exactly where the electrodes are going to be placed and, the, and you're doing your treatment, and we'll go over the various specifics about muscle stimulation regardless of the device you have, you're going to kind of flex with it without really putting strain on your, on your, on your injured area. I've personally fit some Arizona Diamondback starting major league players that had microfracture knee surgery. 
with muscle stimulation devices. And the reason why is with muscle with microfracture knee surgery, they are they're attaching all these little microfracture attachments, and they're not even weight bearing for a month. Like for an entire month, they put any weight on their leg. Well, if you don't put any weight on your leg, let alone exercise it, your legs muscles are going to atrophy. So by doing muscle stimulation in a very gentle, controlled environment with specific parameters set up by the, in their case, the trainer, their trainers, they're able to try to prevent the muscles from atrophying. And eventually, once the, I guess after a month or two, they can get more aggressive. And you're going to go by what your physician or clinician or therapist suggests. But it would be, I, I recommend again, you can just pause these tutorials and take a minute or two to read how, I'm sorry, how it works. It's a relaxation of muscle spasms. Sometimes you put the electrodes exactly on a, where the muscle is spasming, and then you turn up the device. You can either put it on constant, where it just contracts it for a certain amount of time, and then the muscle fatigues, quit spasming. Or you can set it up on a cycle where now the, the electrical muscle stimulator is controlling the contraction and release of the muscles to try to help with muscle spasms. Um, prevention or retardation of disuse atrophy, increasing local blood circulation, like a, like a massage, re-educating the muscles and maintaining our increasing range of motion so you can look at the each our, all our devices have the manual online you can read specifically about those now if you click on the specifications of we'll just we'll just go with our muscle stimulation device the twin stim 2 but you can do, you can go to the manuals or the specs on the other devices I mean the quad star 2 you can see that all our devices are dual function devices so you can use it as a tens unit 10 hours a day, and then you can use it as a muscle stim twice a day if that's what your trainer or your therapist or your physician wants for 10 minutes of specific muscle rehab on individual muscles. So with the muscle stimulation mode, you basically have constant, synchronized, and alternate. Constant means it's just on and it's going to stay on, like if you're trying to fatigue the muscle, but that's not too common. Synchronous means you have two channels, and both of these channels are firing at the same time, meaning Say you're, you're trying to train, um, you're working on a large muscle group like your thigh, so you might have all four electrodes contracting at the same time. Alternate means one channel, then the other, then the first channel, then the second channel. So let's say you were doing, um, let's say you had an arm injury, and you wanted to work your biceps and your triceps. Well, you might have two, one channel, two electrodes on your bicep, and that contracts, and then it alternates to your tricep, and then you that contracts. You're not going to be contracting the bicep and the, tri the tricep at the same time and be working against each other. So you can go back and forth, back and forth. It alternates between channels and therefore the muscle group that the electrodes are placed on. And if you look at my supplies, we, there's splitters where if you want to get a greater range of muscle coverage, you can, um, you can use splitters that split into, that they would split one pin into two more so you could have more coverage. Now synchronous, as I said, is both channels occurring synchronously and alternates back and forth. So let's talk about this for a second. When you're you're going to set, when you do your muscle stim, you're going to see up here, it, right here it says tens. But if you're in the muscle stim mode, it's the EMS over here. If you're using this device, and what you're going to do is you're going to, it's going to ask you, okay, what do you want the pulse rate to be? And we have some parameters and suggestions, but really, your trainer, your therapist, your physician are going to work with you on that, or maybe you'll just try a few things and. See which one contract, which pulse rate, and pulse width seems to grab the muscle the best. So when you when you're using a muscle stimulation device, what what's happening is you're going to go from zero power to full power. That's called the ramp on. So it's going to ask you, well, how many seconds do you want the ramp to be? Well, if you have a bunch of surgically repaired ligaments and tendons, you don't want the ramp to go from zero to full power in a second because it's going to like jerk. You might say, hey, eight seconds. So it goes very gently and slowly from zero to full power over eight seconds. It's like doing an arm curl very slowly. So you're so you're contracting the muscle at the gym with your, you know, you're using free weights or a machine. But you're not jerking on anything surgically repaired, soft tissue, maybe you have stitches, um, ligaments, tendons, whatever that's been surgically repaired, you don't be yanking on it. So you want it to go very slowly up to full power. So let's say your ramp on is eight seconds. It's going to go from no power to full power over eight seconds. But then at that point, you want to hold the contraction for a certain amount of time. So let's say you want to hold the contraction for nine seconds. Then the on time is going to be eight seconds plus nine seconds, which is 17, 
And then automatically, at the end of that contraction cycle, it's going to go back down to zero power one second. So you, if you say eight seconds, zero to full power, at full power, an additional nine seconds. Again, this is all going to be determined by your, your, your physician or trainer or, or therapist. And then one second, then you would say, okay, eight plus one is eight seconds to go from zero to full power, plus nine seconds of full power is 17 seconds, plus one second to go back to zero is 18 seconds, then the on time is going to be 18 seconds. So when you're program, programming your device, you're going to say ramp up eight seconds, on time 18 seconds, if my math is correct. Then you're going to have what they call off time. That means how much time of a rest before the device ramps up again and then is at full power before it ramps down. So you're going to go on, ramp up to full power, on at full power, ramp down for a second, and then off cycle, meaning how, how long do you want to rest before it does it again. So if you're going to do that, you might say, well, I want to rest 40 seconds, because you're not trying to blast yourself. You're just trying to avoid disuse atrophy, and, and over time, you'll get a little better, a little more aggressive, maybe, if that's the, what your physician or therapist want. And then you might say, okay, well, how many minutes? So you might say, well, I want to do a 10-minute treatment. So for 10 minutes, it's going to ramp up to full power, stay on at full power, ramp down to no power, rest cycle, start again for 10 minutes. And then you've done a 10-minute muscle stimulation, and maybe they want you doing it once a day, maybe they want, they want you doing it twice a day. Now, at, at other times, I've, like I just personally, it's um, August 14th of 09 right now, and I just went and fit a patient with a muscle stim TENS device, and this guy was running, and he, somehow he wiped out and landed on his knee and just devastated his knee, and he didn't even know it, how bad it was, because so because his adrenaline was rushing on, so he ran and finished the race. It was, it was a good-sized race for a charity that his company was participating in. And so he did a lot of extensive nerve damage, and now his nerves are not firing the muscle. And of course his leg is atrophying, and it's not a good thing. So he's using the, the, the Twin Stim 2, this device right here, for the pain, all day if he wants. But he's using the muscle stimulation device, and his, and his therapist, which recommended the device because it was getting some good results at the, at, at the therapy clinic, so that's why they wanted to have a home device. They're not only trying to strengthen all the muscles, but they're using the muscle stim in a different capacity to try to retrain the nerves just to fire the muscles, because I, I guess nerves take a long time to heal, and in the long process of healing, the muscles are atrophying. So sometimes you can have a ramp up of one second on time of total two seconds and off cycle, and it's just firing the nerve, firing the nerve, firing the nerve, firing the nerve, to retrain the nerve to fire the muscle. Not to contract the muscle for 20 seconds as, as strengthening purposes, but just to retrain the nerve to fire the muscle in the first place. So that a lot of times they use muscle stimulation devices for that. So let's we'll get out of this and we're going to go over to the document you might be familiar with, general information. And we're going to go down to neuromuscle stimulation. Muscle stimulation is for the purpose of relieving muscle spasms, countering the effects of disuse, atrophy, increasing range of motion. Muscle re-education to illness or injury and treatment of scoliosis were used a lot in, 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 in athletics. The contraction of muscle fibers, as is known, is connected with the introduction of electrical nerve impulses, which in turn leads to the generation of another electrical signal or potential of action of the muscle fibers, fibers which allows the contracting process to take place. In sports medicine, neuromus Muscle, muscle stimulation has been used for strengthening maintenance of muscle mass and strength during prolonged periods of immobilization, especially if your leg's all bandaged up and cast and can't even bend it. Um, selective muscle retraining and the control of edema, because if, you're, if, you, if you have a lot of edema, they can cause the muscle contraction and that causes the body to, like it's like a massage, and break up edema and then it goes through your lymphatic system and you absorb it and you sweat it out or you the bathroom. It just moves fluid. Okay. So again, depending on which device you have, you're going to go, and then again with the 10 supplies de details, I'll go over a couple additional supplies. Obviously you're going to use electrodes to put it on the muscles that you're doing. You're going to possibly use the two inch square electrodes but you might have um, I'll show you down here you 
bifurcating lead wires. If this is not too common with the muscle stem, but it's possible if you needed these, you could know what they do. They'll come up in a second. A lot of times they might use larger size electrodes, but we offer this option. It's just going to take a few seconds to load up. You can see this is a one. This is a lead wire that goes into one channel. It splits into two pins, but we could add a, a bifurcating to each pin. It turns into two more, so then you could have more m muscle coverage if that's the if that's the purpose or the or what your physician or trainer desires. So you go back to our home page. I showed you on the twin stem two the. Tens muscle stem capacity, and I'm going to show you this real quick in this tutorial. It just takes a little bit of time to load these. A lot of doc these documents have a lot of pictures and everything. If you go down here, you click on that picture. There's specifications on the documentation page. If you go over here, you can see general specifications for interferential tens. Now, interferential is this the, pretty much the premier king of pain relief. So you don't have we, so we only have three pain modes for the quad star two as opposed to five, but, the, but then it has interferential, which is almost the best. So you you can see pulse rate is adjustable to one to one twenty with fifty to four hundred, depending on what works best to grab your muscles. On ramp, you can go up to ten seconds and go from zero to full power. On time, you can have it on for a long time. Off time. Off ramp is 1 to 10 seconds, and then off time up to 99 seconds. And it has constant or cycled or reciprocating. So that's pretty much the explanation. You can go over to the documentation page. And again, you can look at these documents to become very knowledgeable. I guess my website's running a little slow. So if you go down here on the biomedical life systems, you can look at muscle stimulation protocols and electrode placement. They've been in business going on 25 years. They're the premier American manufacturer of electrotherapy devices, so this will come up in a second. You can look at this. And these are suggestions, suggested protocols that your physician or therapist can look at for various conditions. Electro placement. You can see that. Again, we're not making any medical recommendations of anything. It's just this is a tool for your therapist or your physician to look at. Electrotherapy terminology. Click on that. Again, you're going to have frequency or hertz, milliamps, that's the same for most all these devices, pulses, pulse rate and pulse width, mostly going to be determined by your physician. If you go over, click off that. If you want a better explanation, you can go over to the Biomedical Life System Glossary of Terms and Conditions. Not every one of these terms is going to apply to your specific device or that mode, but it's it's good to look at these. I just want to show you that you have access to this on the internet. Now, accommodation is something that you're going to be you're going to want to avoid by having different modes, different settings, different applications and parameter settings. You can make some changes so that your body doesn't accommodate or become accustomed to stimulation stimulation resulting in or it doesn't work as well, or you just your muscles fatigue. Okay, let's look down here. Cycle, electrical timing function, cycling through the ramp, going from zero to full, full power, totally on, and then back down to zero power and off time before it cycles again. The 
frequency, it's the number of cycles of a carrier wave per second, and you have to be pretty specific to do muscle contraction with the muscle stimulation device. But your physician or therapist is going to be very knowledgeable about this. A little bit about nerve fibers, transmitters. Um, all the pulse amplitude is the measure of the magnitude of current with reference to the baseline. So that's the dials that increase it so you can go really strong. If you say you have body fat you're trying to get through to get to the muscle, you might have to turn the amplitude up really, really a lot stronger. It depends on the size of the muscle and, and yourself. Pulse width, the time elapsed from the beginning to the end of all phases within one pulse measured in microseconds. Ramp, the sequ sequential increase or decrease in amplitude width or rate. So these, th th there's this terminology for you to use to look at and review. If you have our device, we have the manuals, we also have um, the specifications, we also have kind of a cheat sheet, instructional, so you could click on this, print this out, make notes. We're adding all these daily eventually, probably in the next couple months, everything is going to be up. It's August of 09 right now. Just give this a second. So you can see we take screenshots, our tutorials will, sh will have screenshots. If you're taking the tutorial on the Quad Star 2 or the Impulse HVG or the Twin Stem 2, we have screenshots. S, A, see here you can see S means synchronized, meaning both channels. This is an 8 second ramp up. See on this device it would say EMS on the, on 16, so that means it takes ramps up in 8 seconds, 7 seconds like on at full power, then it goes off to zero. Then it's off, say you say 90 seconds, it stays off until it goes back on. Pulse rate, see pulse rate or, or hertz will be on the screen. Pulse width, with the tutorials, it will show you how to change these parameters and, and then the timer, how long you want the treatment to be. So that's pretty much the explanation, of, a general explanation of muscle stimulation and how it works. If you have any questions, this review the manuals, review the documents, review the tutorials, and I really hope that you get the best results from our, co our company and our, our products and equipment and wish you the absolute best in your treatment program.